Iranian workers suffering from sky-high unemployment, roaring inflation, and unpaid wages. What's really going on and what can be done to solve it? We have the former Shah's son, Reza Pahlavi. Uh, he joins us now. Your Royal Highness, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Explain what you understand about what's going on in Iran now and what really sparked these uh, recent protests we've been seeing. Well, in a nutshell, we're talking about 40 years of utter mismanagement of the country's affairs under an extremely corrupt regime that couldn't care less about the fate of its citizenry and instead is squandering our country's resources to conduct proxy wars and interference in other countries' domestic affairs in the region and beyond, with the sole ultimate goal of exporting their so-called ideology and impose it on others around the world. Result has been an economic decay, which has led our country on the brink of economic collapse, major crisis in terms of people's uh, inability to find work or jobs, poverty, inflation, you name it, an extremely dismal record that has ultimately uh, boiled to a point that people are simply no longer able to tolerate this and are completely fed up and are asking for fundamental change and are demonstrating today in protest against this regime with the hope of uh, having a different future. And the different future comes down to the very basic things like having a job, having money coming in from, from, from work and things like that. How does that come back? How do we get from where the country needs to be from where it is now, which is clearly clearly a bit of a mess. Well, obviously, the difference where you have governments that care about their citizenry as opposed to one that does not, it makes the whole difference in the day. Iran should be South Korea today. Instead, it's North Korea. It's not that the country's resources have dwindled. It's not that the people are any different. The regime has changed. And as a result, the direction that our country took since 1979 has been today the results that you see. The Iranian people have had 40 years worth of experimentation under the tyrannical uh, uh, and authoritarian dictatorship of a, a clerical regime. And today, all the values that they aspire to, which is freedom, equality, human rights, justice, opportunities, non-discrimination of any form against anyone because of sexual orientation or ethnicity or, or religious denomination, is what the Iranian people at the very least are seeking. And in order to obtain the kind of governance that will progress, uh, put the country back on the track of progress, obviously it has to be one uh, that uh, allows for people full participation, that is democratic in nature, that is secular in nature, with a clear separation of religions from government. The only time we can have uh, an element of sanity, transparency, accountability, responsibility, which is what governments are for, to be at service of their people and public servants can do their job, as opposed to a system that uh, cracks down on people the minute they have the slightest protest and use a uh, machinery of uh, coercion, uh, which is deeply rooted in a paramilitary system that is now a ruling mafia in that country. We should not expect do you think any different be... result than what this regime has done. Your, Your Royal Highness, do you think it can be reformed? We keep hearing about reformist candidates uh, for, you know, to, to, for government within Iran. Can the system be reformed or does it have to be just scrapped? Well, this is something that the regime has tried for many years to try to fool people to believe in. And unfortunately, some people at some point actually believe that perhaps reform is possible. And they attempted it not once, not twice, but three times. And every time it has failed. The reason it has failed is simple. There is no possible way that you can bring about change of policy or laws in any country from a parliamentary process where unelected leaders with absolute final say can pretty much make the final decision. In other words, legislation is impossible under the current constitution to bring about any reforms. If tomorrow people, shall we say, want to put an end to this regime, there's no instrument that enables people to conduct free elections to do so under this system. There has never been uh, the, a free uh, election of people's uh, chosen candidates. They had to go through a filtering process, and only the most dedicated to this regime passes through that seat. And at the end, people are forced to choose between the lesser of the evils, and then they end up with uh, uh, this guy or that guy, which at the end are there to, to preserve the system. So if there was any credence or any uh, necessity to give an opportunity for the so-called reform to take place, 
Today, this concept is completely abandoned and forgotten because people know that this is just a waste of their time. It's never going to happen. So as far as I'm concerned and millions of Iranians are concerned, this issue is dead. The next question is, we need to get rid of the system as a whole in order to obtain everything that we are aspiring for in order to govern ourselves and, and lead the country back to the path of uh, prosperity and, of course, uh, freedom. Okay, the system has to go. There you heard it from His Royal Highness Reza Pahlavi. I'm Simon Constable, and that's it.